Our city and state is known for its rich history and its beauty. But what you don't realize is when you get in the heart of Southern New Hampshire, it is very impoverished. There is a lot of heroin use, fentanyl use. There's a lot of crime. There's a lot of violence. You see the brokenness that's in this area. The second I walked into the park, I felt immediate fear. I could feel brokenness and I was, I was scared. And I knew that was the enemy trying to bring me down. He was trying to tell me, Tanya, you're not doing this today. Homeless ministry definitely shocked me. So Lord, just ask that you go before us, that you would give insight into these people's lives, that we could say something or do something that, that they know that Jesus is speaking to them through us. The second I felt that fear, I sat down, I put my hands together and I just prayed because I knew if I didn't have God with me then, then I wasn't gonna be able to do this. So we just had like a little caravan where we handed out food and water. So we had an assembly line, they went through it, and then they would come over to us and we would pray over them. Um, as a baby, I was um, found in a house in the middle of a drug deal going on. And uh, SWAT came in and took myself and my brother away. Uh, we were found in uh, a bathtub. You know, was adopted. I traveled to the United States. I went to 14 treatment centers. I've been hospitalized four times. Two of them were overdoses. Almost lost my life. Two of them were um, because I had gone crazy and I need to be hospitalized. Did all that stuff in, in a secular based programs. None of it worked for me. But the, the hook of drugs is just so strong. Yeah. That's why I'm always amazed when someone breaks free. And there's some statistic, it's like when you go to rehab, if, if you don't have God in that rehab, your success rate's like 20%. But if you have God in the rehab, the success rate goes to like 70% or something. It's like this crazy number, right? That, that with God, all things are possible. Right? Yeah. It's not just cliche thing, it's, yeah. it's, it's reality. I ended up going on a three month drug run and I ended up doing ecstasy for three months and I didn't eat for pretty much that entire time. And when I finished using drugs, because there was no more, I tried to kill myself. Went to the hospital, I knew God had his hand on my life because well, the unfortunate part is the person I was with uh, was hospitalized for over a year in a coma. And then uh, I walked out of the hospital with nothing wrong two days later. Um, you would think at that point I would figure it out, right? I just thank you for bringing her, her here for us today, God. And yes. I pray that you just get rid of this depression, God. I don't wish this on anybody, especially you young, young generation. You know, I can't even imagine what he's been through. Or he's still going through, Lord. I pray to be with him and all of that, Lord. And Lord, I pray to you, bless Lord. Lord. I love you. Everything that he says and that he does, I just pray to you, guide him, Lord. Guide him with, guide his mind, guide his hands, guide his feet, Lord. In 2018, I had a relapse. It was in that moment where I took six months of my life and just gave everything to God. Like, God, I spent five days a week going to worship nights and just laying on my feet, you know, laying on my face, just crying out to God. And I always say today, what changed in my heart was, it's so simple, right? It's God, I put God first in my heart. He's first in my heart. He's first in all your hearts. It has to be that way. And I'm, I'm very emotional about it because he has to be first in my heart or I'm, I'm going back out to those streets. I'll tell you right now, I'm going back to those streets. If he's not first in my heart, I'll be, you guys will be serving me next year. My name is Jen Hebert, and my husband AJ and I are the co-founders of Roca Kids Club. Roca exists so that kids would know the genuine love of God and be inspired to change the world around them. Many of these kids don't have parents. They don't have a mom or they don't have a dad. Family members are incarcerated on drugs in gangs, and so their example is one that leads them to death and destruction. But because we're there and because of the relationships, we have fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and people that come and pull these kids to let them know that they have worth and value and are seen and are known. And that is life changing because not only are their lives changed, but our communities changed. There are a lot of organizations in our community, as well as everywhere in the United States and around the world that serve kids at risk, that are maybe impoverished or, 
low income. But the difference about Roca Kids Club is that we share Christ. We truly share the genuine love of God. And so to be able to reach kids one-on-one -on -one and build relationships and impact them because they get to encounter God's love and they have their lives changed, that's more valuable than any program, anything that any kid could ever have. Yeah, that's playing soccer. We were able to pray with so many people and I was just so filled and I felt God like speaking through me and I just really, I felt compassion for those people and I love them so much, each and every one of them. This trip was awesome because beforehand I didn't really believe in the power of prayer, but afterwards I just felt like Holy Spirit working inside of me, you know? Through this trip I've grown closer to God and like whenever I feel like He's urging me to do something, you get that feeling and then your heart beats a little faster. So. I'm definitely gonna like step out in faith and just do what I feel like I'm called to do.